Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're going to be bringing you another design guide for guns. This time we're going to be doing the Cattleman Revolver. In real life, the Colt Single Action Army Revolver. Arguably the most iconic gun of the Wild West, despite not being many people's favorites in the game. But with that in mind, it is one that it's pretty possible to make some pretty awesome, very, very cool designs for it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be doing the top five designs that I came up with for the Cattleman Revolver in Red Dead online. And as usual, I'd like to remind you that if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content because I have much more to offer and you'll be helping me reach my goal. That goal, again, is 30,000 subscribers by September and 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I even put in a halfway milestone, which I think is very, very helpful. So if you can and you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date. And if you've already done that, I guess the most helpful thing you could do is probably share the video. But with all that in mind, let's get into some background information about the Colt Single Action Army Revolver. The Colt Single Action Army, also known as the Single Action Army SAA Model P Peacemaker and M1873, is a single action handgun with a revolving cylinder holding six metallic cartridges. It was designed for the U.S. government service revolver trials of 1872 by Colt's Patent Firearms Manufacturing Company, today Colt's Manufacturing Company, and was adopted as the standard military service revolver until 1892. The Colt Single Action Army has been offered in over 30 different calibers and various barrel lengths. Its overall appearance has remained consistent since 1873. Colt has cancelled its production twice, but brought it back due to popular demand. The revolver was popular with ranchers, lawmen, and outlaws alike, but as of the early 21st century, models are mostly bought by collectors and reenactors. Its design has influenced the production of numerous other models from other companies. The Colt Single Action Army Peacemaker Revolver is a famous piece of American the original length of the barrel issued to the U.S. Cavalry was 7 and 1 half inches, with an overall length of 13 inches. Bound by Roland White patent number 12648, April 3rd, 1855, and not wanting to pay a royalty fee to Smith & Wesson, Colt could not begin development of a bored-through revolver cylinder for metallic cartridges use until April 4th of 1869. For the design, Colt turned to two of its best engineers, William Mason and Charles Brickerhoff. Richards, who had developed a number of revolvers and black powder conversions for the company. Their effort was designed for the United States Government Service Revolver Trials of 1872 by Colt's Patent Firearms Manufacturing Company, and adopted as the standard military service revolver. Production began in 1873 with the Single Action Army Model 1873, also referred to as the New Model Army Metallic Cartridge Revolving Pistol. The very first production Single Action Army Serial Number 1, thought lost for many years after its production, was found in a bar in Nashua, New Hampshire in the early 1900s. This gun was chambered in 45 Colt, a centerfire design containing charges of up to 40 grains of fine-grained black powder and a 255 grain blunt round nose bullet. Relative to period cartridges and most later handgun rounds, it was quite powerful in its full loading. The Colt Single Action Army Revolver along with the 1870 and 1875 Smith & Wessel Model 3 Schofield Revolver replaced the Colt 1860 Army Percussion Revolver. The Colt quickly gained favor over the Smith & Wesson and remained the primary U.S. military sidearm until 1892, when it was replaced by the 38 Long Colt caliber Colt Model 1892, a double action revolver with a swing out cylinder. By the end of 1874, serial number 16,000 was reached. 12,500 Colt single action army revolvers chambered in the 45 Colt cartridge had entered service and the remaining revolvers were sold on the civilian market. All right, so the very first design we're going to be looking at today is one of my all time favorites. Not just for the Cattleman revolver, but for really all the guns in the game. I like to call this one the Black Beauty. And it's just a really simplistic design. So we automatically first start off we give it the improved sights improved rifling keep the short barrel you could do the long barrel but i think the short barrel looks a lot better for this gun and then we put the pearl grip on it then you're going to want to go and put the full baroque engraving all over the entire gun give that a gold inlay and then all blackened steel for the trigger sight hammer, frame, cylinder, and barrel. Honestly, this one looks really cool. It's definitely, like I said, it's not only one of my favorites for the Cattleman, but one of my all-time favorite designs in the game. It just looks so awesome because one of the core designs that I'll do just on a whim is the all black and cattleman revolver with the pearl grips but then you add that gold engraving into there and oh it just looks so good so that's the first design we're going to be looking at today let's move on to the next one 
All right, and so our next design here is what I like to ironically call the bright side. And for this one, it's gonna be pretty similar to the last one. So again, we're gonna stick with that, uh, the upgraded or improved iron sights, upgraded rifling, the short barrel, but then we're gonna give it the Victorian engraving with a silver inlay. Oh, I should also mention that it has ebony grips, uh, as you can probably see, but yeah, we're gonna give it the Victorian engraving with the silver inlay. And then this is how the metal's gonna look. The barrel and the frame, so the two main parts, are gonna be that blackened steel. But then we're gonna make the cylinder, the hammer, the sight and the trigger all nickel plated and I just think it has a really really nice contrast so you can see all of the uh, smaller parts of it so the cylinder the hammer the trigger the sights all of those have that nickel plating but then just the core base of the gun is all black and that really contrasts well against that silver inlay and having the silver inlay on top of the nickel for the uh, cylinder I think that even pops so that's why I genuinely genuinely like this design a lot of times I like to pair it with that last one I'll have that last one be my main hand revolver and then this one will be my offhand revolver. The grips contrast against each other and there's just enough variation in the guns to show that they're, you know, different guns. So I definitely like this design. I think it stands out. I kind of like that I think the main part is just that nickel cylinder standing out against the black and steel. I think it looks so good. So this one, to make it look like this, costs eight gold bars, so it's not even that expensive. But that's the second design, so let's move on to the third. All right, and so for our third design here on the list, we're going to be keeping it stereotypical with the iconic Eagle Butt Peacemaker. So for this one, we're going to have the upgraded iron sights, the improved rifling, the short barrel, the pearl grip, which we're going to uh, carve an eagle onto. Then we're going to have full Victorian engravings with the silver inlay and then all of the metal for this one is going to be the nickel plated look and now this is just such an iconic look a lot of times when I get you know an itch to suddenly change up my cattleman revolvers I'll do both of them like this and I'll do your stereotypical wild west hero sort of look because this gun is just so iconic with that look probably much less common in real life than it is in Hollywood but I think we're all used to seeing a cattleman revolver that looks like this and this is one of the few times where I think the engraving uh, is just very very subtle and it still looks really good so this one uh, costs six gold bars so it's actually not very expensive to make your gun look like this because the nickel plating is actually not that expensive but it still has one of the most consistent and uh, decent looking overall appearances out of any of the metals so that is number three like I said that one's the eagle butt peacemaker so for this one, I like to call it the navy blue, and I know that may not sound that creative, but for some reason when I look at it, that's just all I think. And this one is a fun color combination. So much like the other ones, we're gonna do improved iron sights, improved rifling, short barrel. This time the ironwood grip, and I put the mesquite finish on it, no carving on it. You could put one, but I think it looks better plain. And then we're gonna be doing the, once again, we're gonna be using the full Victorian engraving, but this time it's gonna have that full nickel engraving in it, or the nickel inlay in it, and I just think that looks really good. So then after that, uh, we need to make the metals as follows. The barrel, cylinder, frame, and hammer all need to be blued steel, and then the sight and the trigger need to be nickel plated. And honestly, the blue looks so distinct on the Cattleman revolver. On a lot of the other ones, it looks, I, I would argue, probably more realistic, but it just has such a uniform look on the Cattleman revolver. It almost looks like it was hydro dipped blue. And that blue pops out against the nickel plating and the mesquite grip so well. So this one is just a really, really classic look. I think a lot of people don't use it, but it it's honestly underrated in my opinion, because I think it looks awesome. So this one is another great design. Like I said, I call that one the navy blue. This one, to make it look like this, costs six gold bars so again not very expensive uh but yeah well worth it i think so that was number four let's move on to the fifth and final design we're going to be looking at today all right and so for our final design we have what i like to call the bugle and i i think i named it that just because of the brass parts of it so for this one we're going to start off as always improved iron sights improved rifling short barrel Ironwood grip, again with the mesquite finish on it, no carvings. This time we're going to go back to the Baroque engraving and we're going to give that the blackened steel inlay. And then the metal is going to be as follows. Browned steel for the trigger, sight, hammer, and the cylinder. And then brass for the barrel and the frame. And now you knew you couldn't make it through one of my gun videos without getting that brass and brown steel combo. Honestly, I really love it. I think when I started using this one, I had the cylinder also as brass. So it was basically just a brass gun with browned accents and then the black 
black engraving. And I think that still looks good. But honestly, swapping out the cylinder for the brown steel, I think gives it a very unique look. That two-toned almost kind of imitates the color case hardened look that I know we all wish was an option for all of us in the guns. I think it was added once with an outlaw pass, but I missed it. And I think a lot of other people did too. So it's a shame that they haven't brought that back for the rest of the players. But you can still have a pretty dang good looking gun. I mean, it's obviously anachronistic because I don't think I've ever seen a Colt single action army revolver made entirely of brass or at least even even brass plated. I don't think I've ever seen that even in a modern reproduction. So it's definitely a very unique look. I think it also is decent for a lot of people that are trying to go for that fancier look because the brass does work passably well as gold if that's what you're going for. Plus this will cost you a lot less because to make up your revolver to look like this will cost you 12 gold bars. So it's decently expensive but not nearly as expensive as going for full gold plating but it still looks really really cool in my opinion. And like I said that brown steel and brass combo is so so underrated. So that is the last design that we're going to be looking at today for what I consider to be the five best designs that you can make for the Cattleman Revolver in Red Dead Online. I do just want to give a little honorable mention here at the end because this uh, uh, Whitchurch variant of the Cattleman Revolver was added with the Quick Draw Pass 1, so that's over now, so if you missed it, that's a shame, but you can't get this anymore. But I honestly really, really like this. It's actually gotten me to start using the Cattleman Revolvers again instead of my Navy Revolvers. Now, mind you, the Navy Revolvers still perform better, but this one will give you that stat boost like all the variants do where you're suddenly working with with the max stats for that gun instead of starting off with the lower stats and then having to work your way up. If you use any of these variants, you're automatically getting the better stats. And the Whitchurch variant is one that I absolutely love. It's got a lanyard uh, hook down on the butt of the gun. It's got uh, what looks like rolled patterned ivory grips, which I love and wish was and I wish that that was a regular option that you could use to customize any Cattleman Revolver. And it has got a ton of engraving, the full length of the barrel, all over the frame, all over the cylinder. It looks so good. I definitely really like the Whitchurch variant. So I figured I'd give it an honorable mention spot on this list. But that's actually where we're going to end the video for today. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope these designs helped you if you were looking for a unique or a, a cool new way to try to uh, design your Cattleman revolvers if you're a Cattleman person in the game. Because, you know, I enjoy making these videos and I think that the designs all look pretty dang good in the end. Uh, I'm probably going to obviously work my way through most of the guns in the game in a video of this manner, you know, coming up with cool designs and then showing them. I think what I currently have the most requests for is either the Schofield revolver or the semi-auto pistol. So I guess today's challenge for what you should do down in the comments section is tell me just which one of those you want to see next. Do you think the Schofield revolver des deserves to go next or do you think I should bow to the pressure of all the people that have asked for the semi-auto pistol and do that next? My natural instinct was going to be to do the Schofield revolver just because I'm a revolver man over pistols. But I have seen a lot of requests for the semi-auto pistol so that's why I'm offering that. So let me know down in the comment section which one of those do you think I should do next after this video. And if you like this video, I definitely invite you to leave a like rating on the video to show me and YouTube and everyone else that might consider watching this video at any point that it is a good video well worth watching. And lastly, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you haven't already, I definitely invite you to subscribe to the channel. That way you can help me reach my goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you can also stay up to date on all the content I release on a daily basis, which is going to be great for you if you enjoyed this because my content is all pretty consistent. And if you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy the rest of it. So thanks for watching and have a nice day and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.